Now in this video, I'm going to give two examples that are very similar, but they are actually really different and students screw this up all the time. So make sure you pay careful attention to both of these examples and the differences between them. So the first example, the point three and four is on f of x. Find the corresponding point on y is equal to negative five f of negative three x plus six minus one. So basically we're taking this f of x and we're transforming it into this new function here. So that means that this point is going to be mapped to this new function and they want to know what's that new point that's going to be mapped. So the first thing to do is you want to take this transform function and put it in our general transformation format. So notice how this negative three is attached to the x and we have to factor it out to make it a k value. So if we rewrite this function up here, so we'd have negative five f of take out the negative three. So if we factor out a negative three from negative three x plus six, we'd be left with x minus two. Positive six divided by negative three is negative two. And then minus one. And now it's easy to see what letters each number corresponds to. So we know that the a value is negative five, the k value is negative three, the d value is positive two, and then the c value is negative one. So now that we have all of our transformation values, we can figure out what the mapping formula is to transform this f of x function into this function here. And just for reference, I put the mapping formula up here. So this uh, column here represents f of x. So f of x, if we take a point x and y on it and we transform it into this, the new point would be x over k, which is negative three, plus the d value of two. And then the y values would be a y plus c. So negative five y minus one. So that is our mapping formula for these specific transformations. So now what they want is they said that the point three and four is on the original function, so it's on f of x, and we have to transform it to get a new point on this transform function. So all we do is we take this point, the x and y values, and we plug it into the formula. So we'd have three divided by negative three, which is negative one, and then negative one plus two is positive one. And then this four here, negative five times four is negative 20, negative 20 minus one is negative 21. So this here is our final answer. That's the corresponding point on this transform function that uh, got transformed from the point three and four on the original function f of x. We just did the uh, mapping uh, formula and then put that original point three and four through the formula to get our new point on the transform function here. Now for the next example, the point four and eight is on the graph y is equal to two f of two x plus four minus two. Find the original point on f of x. So sounds sort of similar to this question, but it's not. Before we were given a point on f of x and we had to find the corresponding transform point. In this case, we're given the transform point because it's on the transform function and we have to find the original point on f of x. So the initial steps are the same as the previous example. We have to take this transformation and put it in the proper general transformation format. So Notice how this two is attached to the x and we have to factor it out to have this k by itself. So y is equal to two f of, let's factor out this two. So that would be the k value and then we'd be left with x plus two. And then this minus two here is on the end. So what are our transform values? So we know, let's write it over here. So a is equal to two, the k value is two, the d value is negative two because it's x minus d, so x plus two we can rewrite as x minus negative two. So the d value would be negative two, and then the c value is negative two as well. 
So taking these transformation values and then writing them out in the mapping formula, f of x is transformed to this function here. So the mapping formula would be x over 2 minus 2, 2y minus 2. I just took these uh, transform values and put them in this formula. So before, in this example, we had the point 3 and 4 and we had to transform it. We would just simply plug in 3 and 4 into the x and y values of the mapping formula and get our new transform point. But in this question, we have our transform point 4 and 8 and we have to find what original values we were uh, transforming to get that 4 and 8. And the way you do that is you just take this 4 and make it equal to the uh, transformation uh, formula or the mapping formula for the x values. So before we were taking a point and plugging it in for x, now we're taking a point and we're finding what was that original x value. So if we do a little algebra here, bring the negative 2 over, so 4 plus 2 is 6, then multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this denominator, we would end up with x equaling 12. And then same thing for the y values, so we make the mapping formula for the y values, this 2y minus 2, equal to our new transform point of 8, and then solving, bringing the negative 2 over, 8 plus 2 is 10, divide both sides by 2, so we'd have y is equal to 5. So these here correspond to the coordinates of the original point on f of x. So the original point is 12 and 5. So that's our final answer there. So as a recap, rewatch the videos if you don't fully still get the difference between these two questions. But make sure you're aware of whether you're given points on f of x and then you have to find the corresponding point on the transform function which would mean you just take that point that you're given and put it through the mapping formula and then to get the new point or if the point is given on the transform function you have to make those points equal to the mapping formula and then solve for the x and y to get the original point on f of x. So just pay attention to those differences, make sure you know what the question is asking you.